Hi, it's Doug Holland LMT with a massage tip for massage professionals. Today we're going to be discussing radial tunnel syndrome, which is screwdriver syndrome, right? We've all heard of it. Turning and supinating the arm. Uh, what are the symptoms of that? Well, a person's going to come in, they're going to tell you that they have pain right about here in their forearm on the proximal end and right about here on the lateral aspect. And what we want to make sure is, is that we're not talking about lateral epicondylitis. Lateral epicondylitis is going to be up on the humerus. We're talking today about the radius itself and the pain that's associated with this part of the forearm. And just as a reminder, what are the three nerves of the forearm? We have the, the radial nerve, which is all the extensors on the back of the arm, musculotaneus, which is the bicep uh, muscles, and then we have median and then the ulnar nerve. Today we're going to be discussing the radial nerve and where it passes through that tunnel. Because where it passes through the tunnel is where the inflammation can actually affect it, that radial nerve, okay? Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the table and I'm actually I'm just gonna sit in a chair and do this it's just easier and I'm gonna demonstrate on myself where these muscles are that actually affect this particular issue and I'm gonna show you how to work on these particular muscles for yourself as a practitioner and then we're gonna bring in a patient and we're gonna demonstrate how it would work these muscles on a patient to bring relief to this particular issue okay so let's go down Okay, now we're going to discuss the three muscles that are involved in radial tunnel syndrome, aka screwdriver pain syndrome. The first one is the biceps brachii, the second one is brachioradialis, and the third one is the supinator. Now why do we choose those three muscles? Because each one of those muscles is involved in supination. They're the chief supinators of the forearm. Now how do we know what supination is? Supination, uh, my instructor taught me that when you open your hand, you put a cup of soup in it and your hands up, then you know that you're in the supinated position. If you tip it over and the soup falls out of your hand, you're pronated. So supinated, pronated. So we're only looking at the muscles that actually supinate because remember, the inflammation and the pain is in the radial tuberosity area or the, the proximal end of the radius itself just slightly below the anti-cubital space. So that little soft spot that we have there. So that's why we're going to discuss these three muscles. And we want to also make this clear. It's not to be confused with lateral epicondylitis, which is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. That's, that's tennis elbow. So if the pain is up higher, we're looking at tennis elbow. That's the insertion of the ex extensors. What we're looking at is down deeper in the forearm itself. This is the one that's usually from people that do overuse of using a screwdriver or you know working on a keyboard, or texting, things like that. This is where the problem is going to originate. So let's start first uh, with the biceps brachii. So what does the biceps brachii do? Well, we know it flexes the arm. And we're talking about the arm. We're talking about the upper arm. Flexes the arm. We know that it supinates the forearm. That's the most important thing for us to know. And we know it also flexes the elbow, okay, which is the forearm, so it flexes. Anybody get a better picture in there like that? So flexing or flexing or supination, that's its primary. Uh, because its origin, remember there's two muscles there, so we have the long head uh, origin, which is the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. I can't really show that in the video here, I'm not, it's too far to get close up, and, the, and of course the coracoid uh, process uh, of the uh, of the scapula itself okay so forget about where it originates what we are more concerned about is as it comes down the belly stops about here you can see where mine stops right about there both bellies and then the tendon goes down to the posterior tubercle of the radius or they call it the tuberosity uh, of the radius itself tuberosity which is just on the medial side of the radius and that's important because that tendon when it comes on the just on the medial side that's what when it draws in that's what allows for supination it's pulling the radius into external rotation just like that now 
if the bicep tendon that's in that area right there that it inserts on the radius is inflamed, then it would be bicep tendonitis at the insertion, okay? And that's a kind of a difficult one to know what to do about because it's the deepest one, right? It's kind of hard to get to. You can get to it. I, I figured out a way to hook my thumb to get to it. Uh, but it, because it's so deep, you have muscles above. The brachioradialis is actually above that. And, the, and then you actually have deeper to that is the supinator. So you've got these three different layers of muscle right over the top of it. So to get down to it, you have to kind of invade that, that anti-cubital space, that soft space to get down in there. So the biceps brachii is one of the areas in which we're going to look at, and I'll demonstrate in a little bit later how to, to, to take care of that. Now, let's go on to the brachioradialis. Okay, so the brachioradialis flexes the elbow, right? Flexes the elbow, but it also pronates and supinates the arm. Now, where is its origin so it's able to do that? The origin is the proximal two-thirds of the lateral supracondylar ridge, okay, of the humerus, up in here, somewhere in here. And then it goes all the way down and inserts on the styloid process, the lateral one, of the radius. Now that's important because that's what allows for that pronation and supination because it's attached to the radius itself. You will notice most people will have their problems in the belly area of the brachioradialis. This is where the cramping takes place. This is where a lot of inflammation takes place. So we're going to demonstrate here in just a little bit how to work this because, man, you can make somebody fly off the tail if you do this right. The next muscle that we're going to talk about is the supinator. The supinator is easy to remember because it supinates the arm. That makes it easy, right? Now what's cool about this muscle is it originates on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and some other little areas, some other little ligaments. But what's neat is it goes underneath the anterior lateral surface of the proximal one-third of the radial shaft. So it goes up, it hooks up underneath. That's how it's able to pull it over like that. I mean, it's kind of neat because it wraps around like a rope. It wraps around that, you can see on that part of the radius right there. It goes up underneath and man, when you pull, I, that's the handshaking muscle right there. There's no doubt about it, because boom, it's pretty, it's pretty. But to get down to that guy, that's, that's a little different. And we're going to discuss how to get down to that. All right, let's start with how to work these muscles. So what I want to do is show you how to work these muscles on your own. And the first one we're going to work on is the biceps brachii at its insertion. And what I do is I take my thumb and I find out where it inserts, and it's pretty easy to find. You just start running around here, and you start whittling your finger in there deeper and deeper into that anti-cubital space. And I dig in there, and all of a sudden I find where the tendon is, where it inserts on the radius. And I squeeze and I hold down. Now here's the cool part. Then I go ahead and I flex my bicep. Oh, I can feel it. Oh man, that hurts really, really, really bad. I'm flexing my bicep and then I just go ahead and keep flexing it and I just hold for 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds, as long as I can handle it. But I'm on that tendon and that baby hurts. So if there's any inflammation because of that tendon, that's gonna help. Now, I don't know if I can show you this, but I'll take my hand and I'll just gently rotate it back and forth to cause medial and lateral rotation of that tendon itself. You just If you supinate just a little bit, it takes pressure off, but if you pronate, you can get that bicep tendon really, oh yeah, I can feel it in there. That's a, that's a tough one. All right, so that takes care of that. Find the tendon, apply compression. That's about all you can do. I mean, you can maybe do a little circular friction with your thumb, but really it's just compression and then use the arm to move a little bit to, to get deep in there. The next one is a brachioradialis. This one I like to work by thumb driving. I find the styloid process and I just start working my way up walking what I call walking the ridge. It's actually what separates the flexor muscles from the extensors. And right now I'm starting to feel pain. I'm starting to feel a lot of pain because I'm digging in pretty deep. I'm not gentle on myself. 
and I work my way up and I'm still on it, I'm still on it, I'm still on it until I get into the deeper part of the belly and there, it, oh, that just hurts really bad. Usually I'm going to find trigger points on myself right in this area for the kind of work because I'm always squeezing. You can see, see the muscle, see how it's flexing. And I'm, work, I'm actually flexing my muscle right, let me see if I can get a better picture of that. And get right to it, there we go. I got my thumb right on there. So you're going to find trigger points right in this area. Oh, that hurts right there. That is a sweet spot. And so just do some pronation, supination, pronation. That's a little bit of cross fiber friction on that baby. It works so well. You'll actually feel those muscle fibers just popping underneath your thumb. You just dig around in there and break that garbage up. I love doing it to myself because it, get, it does bring relief. It's easier if you get a massage therapist to do it for you, but you know, hey, we don't always have time to get somebody else to work on ourselves. Now, that's more of a superficial muscle. To get onto the, the supinator, we actually have to get underneath that belly. So what I like to do is fully pronate the arm like this. See, my hand's turned over. I take my fingers and I dig. Oh, yeah. I dig up underneath there. Now I'm on that supinator. I can feel it. And I take my hand and then I supinate. Oh, wow. Oh, that hurts bad. Yeah. So I'm digging in and then I supinate. And I am on that supinator. You just take your fingers and just dig in there. I, don't know, I swear I like to torture myself, I think. But anyways, that's how you get to the supinator. It's kind of tough to do it from the lateral up and condyle. I mean, you can dig in there and hit, and hit those extensors. It's not really easy to, to reach them. You can try to do it. But if you get hooked underneath the belly of the brachial radialis, put them fingers right up on that radius and then start to supinate. Boom, boom, boom. All right? So that's how I do it to myself to break up that tension and stress and inflammation that's on that arm. Might even have to ice it a little bit. But now we're going to demonstrate on a patient how to do it as a practitioner. So here we are with our volunteer that likes to be tortured, Lori. And we're going to go ahead and start working. Let's start with the biceps brachii, just like I did on myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that anti-cubital space. And I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going straight in there until I find the biceps brachii tendon. Now the way I feel it is I'm simply pulling on the wrist here. You can see I'm pulling on the arm, I'm bringing it into extension, and I found it. It's pretty easy to find. Okay, And she's in a little bit of pain because for the demonstration purposes, I'm taking my thumb and I'm hooking it down in there. And what I can do is I can do the same thing. I can ask her to go ahead and flex her bicep brachii. Well, now she's squeezing, and I can feel it. And then I just bring it more into extension, more into extension, more. You don't want to go in with the bicep because you're taking you're taking the pressure off. You want to extend the arm like this to really engage, helping that uh, that that inflammation that that tendon insertion on the on the radius is. So that's how I get to the the biceps brachii tendon. Now let's go on to the uh, brachial radialis. Styloid process, right? I'm going to thumb walk all the way up that ridge. I'm going to follow that muscle all the way up. And I'm going to be looking for trigger points in this area. Now that I get further into this arm, usually the patient's going to start flinching because it's going to get more and more painful as you dig into the belly. And I'm going to find those trigger points. Now here's what's cool. If I find a trigger point right here, I bring my thumb, I add some compression, and then I do rotation, rotational movements, and allow that to do the circular. Instead of my thumb doing the circular friction, I allow the arm to do the work for me, and I just pin it with my thumb. Then what I'll do is I'll do transverse work. I'll work all the way around, digging in really deep into that muscle belly, all the way across all the way down. You get in here, you're going to have people flinching pretty good. So you got to be careful. You want to give them some discomfort, otherwise you're not getting any work done. Okay? You got to have some discomfort. 
I know there's massage therapists out there that believe in just spreading oil, but if you're doing therapy, you got to get in there and dig to give the, the, just like stretching. If you just stretched where you barely felt any kind of resistance, you're not going to actually stretch your muscles. You got to do it to where it's uncomfortable. And so I work all the way across. And that's usually a really wonderful feeling uh, when you're done. This muscle is so relaxed. All right, now the supinator. Again, you're going to find the belly of the muscle of the brachioradialis. You're going to find where that radius comes through. And then I'm going to hook up underneath. And I'm going to get to the supinator. Now, I'm supinating the hand so I can work it all the way down right up underneath it right there so I'm got pressure against that radius as we move all the way inferiorly and superiorly along that arm like that now you can squeeze the the, the muscles you can squeeze and jostle them like that to help loosen them up but I find, and there's, there's one other technique that I could use, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't have my lotion on my hand, I should have had lotion, is wrenching back and forth across the whole muscle. And if you do that, you get a lot of nice separation. And you could do it very quickly as you work your way all the way down the arm. With lotion, you're not going to have any friction, okay? But you can actually bring separation to those muscles and the fascia that lies in between. We don't want these muscles glued together. We don't want that inflammation to stay. We want to go right after that inflammation. And you'll find it. Now, there is a word of caution. If you have somebody that's on any kind of blood thinning medications and you use compression in this area to get to that bicep tendon, you will bruise them. So you have to warn them there will be a bruise right here in the elbow uh, from, from that pressure. Or if somebody just bruises easily, you have to be careful. Okay, because this area just has soft tissue that really doesn't have much protection. All right, and you don't want to go too deep in there and hit the, any of the uh, arteries. You just want to make sure that you stay on the tissue itself or the tendons themselves and work them. And you'll learn as you probe around, get a volunteer that you can probe around and, and learn how to really, because most time we're just doing the superficial work, a little bit of petrissage. This is a way to get directly, this is, a, this is a part of sports massage. People always say, what is sports massage? This is sports massage. You're working on individuals that, that have this, this uh, particular problem, okay? Well, I hope you enjoyed this massage tip on radial tunnel syndrome. And if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe because like we've said, we're gonna make a bunch of these videos. And just remember, if there's no discomfort, well, it's nothing more than a foo-foo massage.